everyone, and welcome to the Disability Channel Detroit. I am Zach Damon. So excited to welcome you to the show today, folks. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll have our feature interview guest, Diane Winterstein. Would you like to donate to our employment programs? Please follow the link below to donate through PayPal. All proceeds go to our program. Hi, my name is Julia Romaldi. Please come join us on the Disability Channel. Please stay tuned, we have amazing guests. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Disability Channel Today Detroit. I am Zach Damon and I am so excited to welcome our feature interview guest for today. We have Diane Winterstein, the coach of the Motor City Wheels of the NWBA Junior Division. And for those of you that don't know, the NWBA is the National Wheelchair Basketball Association. Diane, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. It's a pleasure to be here, and you know it's wonderful that you have the show on. Oh, thank you. Well, if you don't mind, um, there's wonderful, wonderful things we'd like to talk about uh, with the team, and of course, the things you're doing. Uh, so we're going to jump right in. And for those that don't know, you are a certified therapeutic recreation specialist with experience in clinical and community settings. And you're also a lecturer at Wayne State University in Detroit, Oakland University, and of course, the University of Michigan Flint. And you also worked uh, as a special recreation supervisor for the city of Sterling Heights for 27 years, planning and implementing leisure leisure, social and instructional programs uh, through the use of therapeutic recreation techniques to meet the leisure needs and interests of people with various ages and disabilities. And you're currently working uh, in a private practice for individuals with traumatic brain injuries and spinal cord injuries. So amazing background that you have. And I wanted to know, Diane, uh, what was it that sort of brought you to therapeutic recreation? Way back after I graduated from high school, I had met a, a man named Robert Slattery, and he was involved with the Michigan Wheelchair um, athletic Asso- association back back then, and I had done some volunteer work at Rehab Institute in the physical therapy department because I thought I wanted to be a physical therapist. So I spent some quality time down there learning how to how to work with folks that that were going through therapies and what I could do to help them. And Bob Slattery thought that I would be a good fit for working with wheelchair sports. And I had always been active in sports through grade school and high school. So I thought, well, why not? And I felt that just because someone had some sort of a limitation of some kind, doesn't take away their competitive spirit, does not take away the need for them to be competitive and active. And through the Michigan wheelchair games, I could see how they could do track and field and swimming, weightlifting, table tennis, you know, all these, these wonderful activities. And I saw the uh, joy that people had when they competed and the, the tenacity and the, the, the everything that they, they put into their training. And um, after that, I decided to, uh, I loved basketball, so I decided to uh, work with some of the folks at, at Rehab Institute once I graduated from co- college and I got my first degree, I got my degree and was down at uh, Wayne State. Uh, um, so I got through that program and immediately started working at Rehab Institute. And my, uh, my folks that I worked with there were on the uh, spinal cord unit. So engaged with that, became an idea of let's have sports. You know, what can we do? And we used to have the rehab games. So we would have any patient that was in the entire hospital in the rehab center could participate if it was just playing a a game of checkers or Uno 
or whatever, or doing bowling or doing the using the pool table or whatever, or table shuffleboard, or whatever. We had all kinds of little Olympics, as we called sure. them. Yeah. But it got everybody involved, and then we gave them little awards. And you know what? After an injury or after being in a rehab setting where you think that, okay, I can't do anything anymore, for them to see that they could still do something and be a little competitive, and they it really brought up spirits. Absolutely. So when there was an opportunity to start a basketball team through the Institute, through the Rehab Institute, we had something called the Rehab Rollers. That was the very first adult wheelchair basketball team that we had down there. And from then it just blossomed to me working with the city for the 27 years, starting the junior program through the city of Sterling Heights and continuing it now, even after I've left the city. So well, going, yeah. go ahead. This has been working in therapeutic recreation is is um, something that allows me to not only do the physical activity with an individual, but definitely work with on the psycho social end of it as well and encouraging and getting people actively involved in, in sports and then hopefully leading them to the resources they need to have to go on for bigger and better things, go on to say uh, college ball or get on an adult team or pray tell, become a Paralympian. And a Absolutely. number of the folks that through my, through my years, I've had several individuals who have been and are currently Paralympics, Paralympians. Wow, that is, that is tremendous. And of course they are, you know, athletic uh, heroes and should be admired absolutely for absolutely. their commitment. And you bring up so many great points. I think, you know, there's so many misconceptions with athletics about, oh, you know, it's just a, you know, a bunch of people getting around and they're just playing a game. But you bring up uh, great points in the fact that athletics can serve such a big, big, broad community and in many, many, many different ways. And of course, you know, you talked about your work, uh, you know, in wheelchair basketball. So aside from your work, uh, you know, you're also the coach of the Motor City Wheels of the right. National Wheelchair Basketball Association Junior Division. And of course, the Motor City Wheels uh, Junior Wheelchair Basketball Program, you know, they provide educational and competitive opportunities for youngsters uh, 6 to 21 years of age who attend elementary, middle, and high school classes. And the Motor City Wheels is a co-ed team uh, and has a vast majority of different uh, disabilities involved, such as spina bifida, uh, spinal cord injury, cerebral palsy, uh, you know, many others, muscular dystrophy, um, you know, amputation, amputees, and other physical limitations. So, you know, comp and then competition is also provided at both uh, the varsity levels uh, as well as uh, other levels as well. But can you talk about, you know, sort of your team and you know how you've done in the junior division of the NWBA. I imagine that has to be very competitive. It is a, a competitive uh, league, obviously, and we are one of uh, two teams, possibly three. I'm not sure if U of M has got their team going yet. But oh, they're working at it. <laughs> I know they've been. They've been. They were. They were. They joined uh, two years ago. Of course, with COVID this year, a lot of people couldn't do anything, but. Um, Grand Rapids has a solid program. We're a solid program. U of M has got a prep level team, which is for the younger kids or kids with more of a significant disability. Um, the, when they're playing at the prep level, they play at an eight and a half foot high basket and varsity is played at a regular regulation court, regulation height, 10 foot basket. Um, our kids range in age from, well, we've had them as young as five all the way up through um, seniors in high school. Uh, they, again, as you said, have a varying types of disabilities. We have a bunch of kids that have spina bifida. We have some that have spinal cord injury. We've had um, con some congenital kind of disabilities through the years. A number of kids with um, uh, muscular dystrophy. So it's it's really, a, a, and we also have boys and girls on the team, which is nice. 
Absolutely. And we're going to talk more with Diane Winterstein, the coach of the Motor City Wheels, right after this. All about inclusion and really giving everyone a fair say. Welcome to the Today Show. This is our flagship show. I am Unstoppable Tracy. I am Zach Damon. It is a pleasure to be here. I am excited. What is up? We have a great show today. Jay Stoyan here for the Disability Channel, the world's only inclusive channel for and by persons with disabilities. Get ready to be inspired, everyone. We have people watching from all over the world, but also all over Ontario. We also take a concerted attention in the veterans community. In moments of stress and trauma, we can get a hold of ourselves. To help make a difference for people with disabilities, to show people how to love themselves or their disability. I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys having me, giving this platform for myself and other people with disabilities. Thank you so much, folks, for joining us for this episode of the Disability Channel of Detroit. Please tune in next time. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Disability Channel of Detroit. Uh, we're talking with Don Winterstein, the coach of the Motor City Wheels uh, basketball program. And of course, you touched on a great point just before the break, uh, Diane, and I'd like to touch on that again, that your team uh, is co-ed. So, you know, men and women can play together and get some really good camaraderie. I mean, have you noticed uh, a benefit in having both uh, male and female uh, competitors? It's wonderful to have girls that compete because we really haven't always had, um, you know, girls. Um, most of the time on my team, I've, I've had had girls. We've had at least, you know, one uh, girl on the on the team. The girls bring a lot to the court. <laughs> they're they're very, um, you know. Uh, good with the boys it helps them to be more competitive and um, to really show their what their abilities are and um, they have a place you know girls can compete with the boys there's there's always they're always welcome we're <laughs> always looking for kids we, okay. we are our team is open to have as many many kids on the team as possible um, we start with the, the young kids, and they're, um, again, you, as you said, they, they play at the eight and a half foot high basket. They really um, are developing their skills, they're developing chair skills, they're developing how to work as a team. They, they have to, there's a lot that they have to, to learn. We practice with the big kids on the same court, and then so that the little kids can watch what the big kids do and gain gain some of the, the knowledge of what they need to do on the court, how to be competitive, how to how to pass the ball, how to catch the ball, how to set a pick, how to do defense. Um, it's it's really a, a good thing. And we find that the, the younger kids tend tend to look up to the the older kids. And we've had a couple of um, of our our juniors and seniors who take the younger ones under their wing. And they, if the kid is is getting a little off or not not listening or or whatever, where they'll they'll partner up with them and we'll try and 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 help them mentor. Oh, so it's cool. the team is not only just for the competitive end of it, but it's also for um, helping develop some of the, as I call them, the building blocks of life, where you're you're not only winning and how to how to win gracefully and and how to lose gracefully and how to be able to um, develop some of the leadership skills that hopefully they'll take on into their lives and giving them some responsibilities of as they get to be juniors or seniors, I, I try to say, okay, you're now the leaders of the team. So your kids or younger kids are going to follow your lead. So help them understand what their roles are and of course, with 
with our team, academics is a big, big key to being on the team because mm -hmm. we want the kids to be good, not only on the court, but off the court. And if they're on the team, they're representing our team wherever they go. So if they're going to school, then you behave correctly in school and you do your homework and you get your stuff in on time. And so it's, it's we really try to focus academically on, on keeping the grades up because that helps them get into the colleges once they graduate from high school. Oh, absolutely. I mean, great points you you touch on. I mean, the, the emphasis of being a student athlete uh, versus you know, just just the emphasis on athletics. And, you know, you touched on it a little bit, but, you know, the NWBA has many different resources for youth and up and coming athletes. So you touched on a little bit of them, but can you talk about some of them that you feel are important? I am on the national board with the NWBA as part of the junior division. I'm the second vice president of the junior division on our national level. And we find that there are opportunities for kids if they are, if they excel in their academics, they're rewarded for that. Every year at the conference level, like we're in the Midwest Conference, we have Midwest Conference awards. So the kids that have a 3.0 or higher grade point average, and we get it from kindergarten on up. I mean, we will, we will recognize these kids that right. they want to achieve these 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 goals of having good good grades well at the national level we have the all academic awards and it's for fifth to ninth graders and then the high school kids and they're they're allowed to submit a um a, a video or some type of uh a project each year they're given a, a, a guideline. This year, the, the project was about how COVID has affected my life. So mm -hmm. we had, I think it was like 19 kids across this nation who submitted their projects. And now when we go to Wichita in another week, we will be recognizing them at the, at the banquet or at the award ceremony, since we can't really do a banquet this year. But we have you know, the resources for academics, which again, when you get that all academic award and you go out and, and uh, apply to college and you can say, hey, I received the NWBA all academic award, that kind of looks good on your on your uh, resume for school. Sure. The other aspect is, is these kids, if they have excelled in sport itself, opens the doors for them to get into universities that, that have the wheelchair basketball programs, also opportunities to move on to the Paralympic level where they're able to compete for the United States of America. So it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity that, that a lot of times parents aren't even aware that this stuff exists, but if the more we can educate people to let them know that we start here at the grassroots level, with the Motor City Wheels or the Grand Rapids Pacers or the Michigan Wolverines, we start at our level with the kids and then they move up and move on to either the Grand Rapids Pacers adult team or our own Detroit Wheelchair Pistons team down at, at uh, RIM you know, Rehab Institute of Michigan. Um, actually, our Detroit uh, uh, Wheelchair Pistons are heading, uh, leaving on Tuesday to head to Wichita because they're going to compete uh, at the national tournament with the adults. So, Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's going to be really good. Yeah, well, we'll cheer on our uh, Detroit Wheelchair Pistons as well. Go Pistons, for sure. Absolutely. Well, and so many, so many great resources you pointed out. And again, great things uh, for the youth. But then, of course, you know, you touched on, you know, how prevalent adaptive sport is becoming uh, at the college and university level. And I am with you, Diane. I only think that adaptive sport is going to become more prevalent. And uh, I will be proud to see the day when pretty much hopefully every uh, university offers some sort of scholarship uh, for adaptive sport. But yeah. I wanted to talk about uh, this interesting event, too, that you're hosting. You're hosting the third annual junior wheelchair basketball team golf outing coming up. Uh, so do you mind sharing a bit about that event and why it's important? 
All right, we are having a wheelchair basketball golf outing at Cracklewood Golf Course on Sunday, July the 18th, and that's at two o'clock in the afternoon. So people could go to church in the morning, they could sleep in, whatever they do on Sunday mornings, but come on out at, at two o'clock and support the team. What this golf outing does is really helps to to establish a fun basis for our team to, to work off of. Um, our team is a local team, but there's not any local teams around here for us to play. If we wanna go play somebody, the closest is Grand Rapids, or we have to go to Cleveland, or we have to go down to Fort Wayne, Indiana. Those are our closest teams that we have. In saying that, Every single one of these competitions that we would go to entail money. It costs money for registration for each of the tournaments. It costs money to register for the NWBA when you register your team. Um, there's finances involved in helping the, the families pay for hotel rooms because usually it's you got to stay at least one night because it's usually a Friday or a Saturday to a Sunday type of a, a tournament. So this golf outing will help to start us off for this next se season um, with a with a money base, some some something to establish so that we can hopefully get uniforms for kids that need it. Because I I know that every single year we're going to get a few new kids. And the other important thing with our team is kids grow. <laughs> So what fit them last year or the year before when they were a size four to six or eight to 10 might not fit them next, next fall. So we're going to probably have to, to purchase some, some new uniforms. Uniform jer jerseys are like $75 a piece. So it's like things cost money as you, as you well know in sports, <laughs> things cost money. So this golf outing, really, really helps with people sponsoring a whole, putting a program ad in, just making a straight out donation. We are appreciative of any any kind of assistance. And of course, we like to see the golfers come out because that helps educate another whole group of people of what people with disabilities are capable of doing. And I talked with the golf course already and for the kids that come out, I, I asked all of our team to come and be there so the golfers know who they're supporting, number one. But the second thing is, is that the golf course is willing to take kids out in the, on their little, their little putting range area there and their little practice area. And they're going to show them how to play golf from a wheelchair. How do you, how do you swing a club? How do you, how do you hold the club? A lot of kids haven't had any experience doing that, and it, there's no reason why they can't learn. So, that's awesome. Absolutely, try to make it a learning experience for the people that participate, plus our kids, and a great fundraiser for us. Oh, absolutely! Sounds like an amazing, amazing event. Uh, very rewarding, and how cool that the uh, team members that do come, I can get a chance to, you know, learn how to golf. Uh, in a chair. Just amazing, amazing stuff. And of course, you know, I never played basketball, Diane, but, you know, I was a wrestler for many years. And I can tell you that being a former athlete myself, you know, sport is extremely rewarding. And, uh, you know, it's a community that not only uh, teaches you sportsmanship and confidence, but also teaches you how to work together uh, with a right. team. So, uh, yeah, I couldn't be uh, in more support of you guys. And of course, uh, you know, you talked about uh, how, how jerseys are expensive, but speaking of apparel, the NWBA also has new U.S. team apparel coming out. So, you know, and, and that's really neat, that campaign. But I wanted to know from you, you know, how are these athletes now, these Paralympians, gearing up for the Paralympic Games in Tokyo? And do you know, have they had challenges uh, training because of the pandemic? I think that I think that we've had uh, challenges across the board with folks through the year that have had had difficulty. A lot of people are doing a lot of individual training and that sort of thing. 
currently the men's and women's teams have been out in Colorado Springs and, and trying out for the uh, men's and the women's team. And they just announced the men's team. I found out that two of our guys that had played for our, our team back in the day, Michael uh, Pay and Matthew Scott, uh, Matthew Scott, you've probably seen on Nike commercials and that sort of thing, because he's. But he was he started with our team way back when, when he was a junior. Um, and then we have uh, the women's team that are their selection to go on this week too. And finally, they have been able to all get together and to, you know participate and train out there um, in Colorado Springs. A lot of that has been on their own. People have had to do things on their own and keeping in shape and that sort of thing, but. They've been doing it because you got these are individuals who are diehard athletes. These are individuals that that want to um, uh, represent the United States in the most positive way and um, bring home the gold. So they're Absolutely. serious athletes. Absolutely. Well, with that, we're going to take a quick break, folks, and we'll be right back with Diane. It is Unstoppable Tracy with the Disability Channel inviting you to subscribe and watch live on Roku TV, on YouTube, on Restream, and also listen in in Wisconsin Radio, Dave Stevens, all around the world. And on top of all of this, really proud to announce that we now also have a mobile app so you can download for free, watch Roku TV for free, and the mobile app is free too from Google Drive. Be sure to download it and have it at your fingertips at all times. There's a job platform and there's a live chat feature and there's the TV feature with Roku TV and there's also the social media channels. Take care folks, bye for now. For the episodes of Veterans Onward to Prosperity, I'm your host, Master Sergeant Retired Anna Maria Bliven, bringing you every week information, resources, and sources to, that help tackle the issues and situations uh, that occur when transitioning from military to civilian life. Hello everyone and welcome back to Disability Channel Today Detroit, talking with Diane Winterstein, the coach of the Motor City Wheels. Wonderful things, Diane, that you uh, have contributed uh, to uh, para, uh, Paralympians and also wheelchair sports in general. We're so, so excited and grateful. And of course, you just touched on the break, uh, all the training that the Paralympic athletes are doing out in Colorado. Um, so the Paralympic Games for Tokyo, then, they, they are on, correct? Yes, they are. August um, 24th is when they start, and it's everything is a green light at this point. Wonderful. And, of course, we definitely wish the men and women in the red, white, and blue uh, all the best and hope that they can come back uh, with the gold, of course. And so... I wanted to know from you, Diane, you know, for viewers, you know, how can viewers find out and, you know, follow you and keep up on what the Motor City Wheels are doing? I mean, do you guys have a website? How can people get in touch with you? Right now we have a Facebook page. And if you look for the Motor City Wheels on Facebook, you can leave us a message and we can get a hold of you that way. Um, through the golf information, my phone number's on there. And there's there's several phone numbers on there. Those are a couple of the parents that are on that uh, that uh, web page as well, or that you'll have out, uh, posted. And contact any of us. There's email addresses. There's uh, the phone numbers are right there. Awesome, wonderful. So yeah, folks, please reach out to Diane and the Motor City Wheels program. Get involved with their team. Get involved with the youth programs. Really try to enrich uh, your son or daughter with the skills that sport brings because it is amazing. Folks, we're going to take one more quick break and we'll be right back. Hi, this is Dave Stevens with the Disability Channel. An inability to break out. I'm sitting by the door on the second floor. 
losing my seven year war. It's not an illusion, so why the exclusion? Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. It's about you. So. Joining me and uh, welcome to this beautiful Travelers Championship. I only want one accolade from you. So my story is unique. It's amazing. But it's not anything that you guys don't have inside of you. I'm not a hero. I'm not anybody special. I'm just this guy without legs and went out. And I just did it. the Democrats. The diplomats and the bureaucrats. This is probably your first interview down on the ground on your butt and stuff like first that. First time ever, All baby. All right. And validate, and validate, and validate. Stay with us and the Disability Channel. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Disability Channel of Detroit. I am Zach Damon with Diane Winterstein uh, of the Motor City Wheels with the National Wheelchair Basketball Association. We are so, so lucky to have you, Diane. And, you know, in closing, I wanted to ask you for all the young people out there with disabilities that are watching, hoping to be their best, what advice do you have for them? My advice to them is to find a program get involved, come to practices. You're going to meet a lot of new people. You're going to meet people that are similar to yourself and that have goals and dreams and want to do things, then do it. Whatever you see, you want to do it, do it. There's so many opportunities for everyone out there from, from boxing to <laughs> hang gliding, I, you know, whatever you'd like to do, swimming, table tennis, whatever your, your choice is, don't let what your mind thinks you can't do limit you. Get out and try. We're there One. to help you. It's, we'll, we'll, we'll teach you. We'll help you. <laughs> Absolutely. And Diane, thank you so much for everything uh, that you continue to give to adaptive sports uh, you know, we appreciate you so much. And, you know, your positive energy is infectious. So I hope uh, everybody can have an opportunity, again, to get involved uh, with adaptive sports. Folks, I am Zach Damon. Thank you so much to, Di to Diane for joining us today on the Disability Channel Today Detroit. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>